Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So we were off the air yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, we did not have internet the entire day. It was really kind of strange because um, no major outages in our area, but our particular little provider was out. Yeah, I mean, just look at the draw with everything that's going on. We kind of wanted to be able to keep people up to date but you know that's that's how the cards went yeah absolutely so we want to thank our newest patrons as uh the patreon family keeps growing we do we want to say a huge thank you to shelly and musa thanks you guys thank you guys you keep us going over here and again everything goes up on patreon as far as yt um we split between the three channels and we are also on Rumble, Brady, and, and BitChute. So the WHO again, remember uh, today is the deadline for that treaty with any sort of new ratifications uh, must be signed today. I, there's nothing new on this out there at all. Uh, it's like I was searching X, searching the regular uh, news areas and and there's just it's just quiet everybody's focused on texas everybody's focused on protests around the world this is exactly part of what they do you know meanwhile they'll just scribble something new into law and by the way we're, we're gonna take your entire family's property no big deal don't worry about it yeah i mean unless you do this thing you know you're gonna lose everything but don't worry i mean just sign this paper and we'll take care of everything for you yeah if you don't trust us you must be crazy <laughs> yeah right again the pandemic treaty deadline may be missed uh it would, you know again we need to be focusing our attention and energy in the right spots and we are definitely having ourselves pulled in all different areas now if we're living anywhere in the u.s i'm sure most people are really really watching uh what's going on in texas and now it's so interesting because all you see is talk of civil war i remember when i made videos five six years ago you know seven even saying you know they're planning on having a civil war oh there'll never be another civil war again uh no they're planning on it nah now yeah it seems like everybody is is awake to the fact that it looks like we're breaking up into a civil war but you know again looks can be deceiving and this is all about just keeping us divided not that we won't have some sort of conflict going on but there's so much happening here. They're talking about a trucker convoy of 700,000 vehicles. That's massive. Massive. <clears throat> and if you caught our video, maybe about two videos ago, two or three videos ago, we were talking about it's been reported in many trucking circles that there are a lot of truckers missing. Ah, yes. Um, I'm just going to let this roll. Let's talk about this while well, muting it um yeah there's a lot of truckers missing and some of these truckers are missing with their trucks and this is in trucking circles so this is something truckers have noticed they're wondering where their friends went uh oh did you hear about that guy just disappeared in idaho that type of thing well you know think about this seven hundred thousand vehicles even if it's seven thousand vehicles or seventy thousand vehicles or 666 whatever it is it's a lot of vehicles that are heading down there and what if some of them have been already just throwing it out there uh hijacked in order to be utilized to set up a false flag just speaking as blatantly as we usually do over on p-a-t-r-e-n e-o-n and there you go there's so many sleeper cells in the country already who's to say and we were putting out there well you know maybe this is how they're getting supplies to uh feed some of them and and get, provide basic needs for some of them that are maybe organizing in very very uh remote areas <clears throat> maybe even training you know for their operations that are going to be uh going into effect shortly uh, but what if they are going to use them as some sort of false flag and make it look uh, like it's the right, somebody on the right that's doing it? Think again in terms of January 6th. By the way, 
By the way, um, I think I'm going to put this on evolutionary, even though we had one taken off of evolutionary. I haven't checked the mail yet. There's probably more. Um, there was one taken off of evolutionary from 2020. Uh, and another uh, several that were marked um, for 18 and older. So I am, I do see like where you guys make note of where videos seem to have disappeared. I went and checked and, and the video was still on uh, Rumble Brighty and, and BitChute um, that they took down. And really, what was it that they took down? It was simply um, a snapshot of, of military equipment moving around the country. You know, back in uh, 2019 and 20, 20, 2019, really, and 2020, Cindy and I were doing a lot of driving, and uh, we were we were traveling around the country. We saw lots of unusual things uh, in Nevada and in New Mexico, Arizona, through the desert areas. We took some interesting photos and videos and stuff. You know, again, they, they don't want us all being able to communicate uh, freely and clearly and sharing information freely and clearly. And they control, they still control this. Um, you know, they control the Internet. So what can you say? You know, yes, they control the mainstream media, but ultimately they, they still control the, the Internet. The Internet was created by the military and it is still under the control of the military and all the alphabet soups. Yet there are those light workers within uh, the military and within the uh, alphabet soups as well that are awakening uh, to a degree where they, they just can't stand still anymore. This is this is where we're heading. We are heading for a major escalation that is so blatantly obvious right now to everybody. But it's how do we handle this? How do we handle this? Um, if you haven't noticed, there's all sorts of protests going on uh, around the world. And when we, um, you know, mention certain things like this, what happens is if, if we go to monetize the video on EE Arts, they'll come up with um, flagging it yellow, saying it might not be suitable for our advertisers. Now, we could demonetize it ourselves, and it seems like we escape a, one level of AI um, and, it, and it's really at the point now where, where the money that comes in advertising is almost insignificant. It, it's almost like why even bother anymore because, you know, they've taken 95% away. And of course, evolutionary, we, we've done more videos on evolutionary that were never monetized um, because they demonetized the complete channel. So, but they, ha they still have their layers. And one of the things that pops up when a video gets flagged as it says the visibility will be limited so please do share videos like this uh, from us and from other people out there that are trying to awaken people it's it's really up to everybody out there that's that's not necessarily making their own videos um, to kind of spread this as far and wide as you can so thousands of uh, farmers in germany heading towards the offices of a mainstream media outlet to demand fair reporting of the protests yeah, you know, as we know, as we were saying, you know, they control, they've bought and paid for um, the coverage to be slanted in their direction. They bought and paid for all, all the politicians that are constantly voting against what you would expect them to vote for, which is, you know, again, the, the, the rights and, and uh, the needs and, and helping to uh, take care of their constituents, which, you know, they were supposedly elected, you know, in order to look out for. But no, you know, this isn't what's happening in this world. French farmers too. France is obviously going to another level and the manure is, is piling high. Tractors are rolling all across Europe um, and they're shutting things down to a higher degree. So this is, again, uh, part of why you really need to be prepared right now. You really should be uh, in the spot you want to be right now and kind of, you know, thinking, okay, um, do I have enough uh, water filtration? Do I have enough dry goods? Do I have enough canned goods? And, and make sure that you're uh, utilizing that which is healthy and look at labels. And, and each time you go to the store, look at labels. As you see, it looks like this uh, truck is on fire. It's not the roof on fire, it's the truck on fire. Mm -hmm. We don't need no water. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. 
Uh oh, I know somebody knows that song. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is, you know, this is going to a new level, and this year is going to be constant escalation. Here you have farmers lining up on beaches. It feels like this is a protest in Le Touquet. And this is where Macron has a holiday house. Yeah, uh, yeah. Again, you know, it's the elites that don't send typically uh, their family members to be sacrificed in, in war. Um, occasionally it happens, but most of the time it's just the commoner. And this goes back to kings and queens and ladies and lords, because nothing's really changed when you get down to it. it. It's some poor sap that doesn't know the other poor sap that's shooting at him, and they're just told to go kill each other uh, to protect your king and queen, or your president, or your nation. <clears throat> what is there to be patriotic about, really, when the political situation is the way it looks? Uh, here you have President Biden saying, for everyone who is demanding tougher border control, this is the way to do it. And I guarantee you, he probably didn't even, you know, he, he probably didn't even lend one word to this. I, you know, all he knows is, you know, just point me towards the bathroom. Oh, I know. I mean, I love this little sentence here. Do da 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 da, and it would give me as president a new emergency authority to shut down the border when it becomes overwhelmed. I mean, has that not been happening? Have has the overwhelm not been going on the entire time? You know, he puts out this piece of paper. Oh, give me more authority. Give me more authority. I'm going to make it better. I really am. This time, I promise. Not like last time. Last time's promise. <laughs> this is a real promise. It just goes on and on and on. And, and as far as censorship is concerned, it's really kind of annoying because we have we really don't have a lot of control over it. I mean, even people trying to make comments, trying to be social, just like the comments are immediately being disregarded. They're just they're gone. And but I want to encourage people to keep going because it's this type of coming together, this type of showing what we would rather have in a very overwhelming way is what we need to do. So I do like to see people coming together to show their discontent uh, with the controllers and what they're doing. And it is going to take layers and layers of people because you have layers and layers of control where certain people might be in charge of a certain thing. Well, if they can do a favor to another person who has the ability to do this other thing to show that they are you know one with the others and they want to change the system it is going to take a level of getting along and we have to decide what we want and come together in that commonality there's going to be a lot of people who still disagree with a lot of little minor details or maybe they're major details but we have to look at those details of disagreement and say okay is it worth it to sit here and disagree or do we want to try to create um, a positive outcome for a bigger a bigger action? So I think this is going to be a lot of people going within while we walk this path and figuring out what do you really want? Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, again, they what's he asking for? More power. <laughs> More power, you know, it, it's ridiculous. The, the only correction that needs to be made is in the entire global leadership. This is, again, uh, it should be getting more and more obvious to the masses that what we need is all new uh, replacement system or systems. You know, break it down to its smallest level, let people truly govern themselves at a much more local level. Because people are different. Again, you know, people in the southern states don't see life the same as they do in, say, uh, the big states, whether it's West Coast or East Coast. Uh, there's a slower pace out there. If you go to Costa Rica, there's, there's you know, that whole concept of Costa Rican time and what's the word they use there's a term they use over there but you will find that it's very hard uh, to get things done especially in a quick manner but the reason why is that the locals don't prioritize business necessarily 
And it's the same thing kind of in the South. In the South, you know, there are those of a <clears throat> nature where they work enough so that they could go and enjoy their time. They could go camping, hunting, fishing, whatever it is they like to do with their family, riding four-wheelers. They, they work enough not to stockpile mass amounts of money and, and bigger and bigger things and more and more debt, um, but just simply so they could have more of the off time to enjoy themselves with their family out in nature. And, you know, this might be an overstatement, but uh, oversimplification, but just living in the South for 20 years after living in the Northeast um, for almost, well, for like 40 uh, and a little bit of time out West, uh, this is one, one of the things that I noticed living in the country. And we could probably equate this, too, to other areas of the country. I just haven't lived up in, say, the Upper Peninsula of Michel Michigan or, or way out there in, say, Alaska or something, you know, really out in nature. But again, there are people that want to live a simple life, want to just, you know, get along with the basics, but find their enjoyment out in nature and and just spending times with time with each other. Whereas the system wants to put it in our minds that you need this your lawn needs to look like this that's why you have to spread roundup on it that's going to cause you know cancer on all your neighbors ah oh, yes the system the system the system it is so diabolical it's beyond description so what does he want to do he just wants to hire more border agents 1300 border agents 375 immigration judges 1600 asylum officers Okay, so wait a minute. He wants to hire more asylum officers than border agents. And again, that's because they just want to uh, integrate as many people into the country as possible. It's replacement theory. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's about changing the mix and, and also uh, eliminating an old system. This is Dmitry Medvedev, who is number two to Putin in Russia. And he is, I just found this curious. He says, establishing a People's Republic of Texas is getting more and more real. Something I wrote about at the end of 2022 in a jocular forecast. The American administration shows its total inability to cope with the migration crisis, which has broken out in one of the largest U.S. states. Its governor stopped giving even the slightest damn as to what the White House and the senile old man Biden think and started to mend barbed wire fences. Indeed, anything will do when defending against the inflow of migrants who uncontrollably cross the southern border. This is yet another vivid example of the U.S. hegemony getting weaker, a process that is happening from the inside. Yeah, inside and outside, and it is the result of America's own actions. But he understands because he, he understands that many of these Migrants are his own and other aligned countries' sleeper cells. But we just look for their words because their words are going to be the same words that they're going to bring up after the war is over. And here again, see now old Biden. Uh, there's a reason why they picked an ancient senile old man to be the president this time because it's the perfect scapegoat. I mean, he's obviously had dementia. He obviously is incapable. It's, you know, it's, he's the new Nero, so to speak, in a way. Well, Rome fell, well, Biden, you know, what do you think? He, he's an old senile man. Well, it's not even the original Joe Biden, and many people recognize that. Uh, there's, the energy is not even close. So whether we are talking clones or whether we are talking, uh, you know, some sort of rubber masks on, you know, we, we understand that this is all a charade. So what you have here is also interesting because maybe there will be a People's Republic of Texas. Maybe, you know, Russia w and China will allow that. Um, we'll see, you know, because ultimately, you know, the BRICS nations are the ones that are slated to come on top of all this after this year and maybe a little bit longer of chaos uh, in the U.S. and then the NATO nations. And he goes on to talk about civil war and stuff. And he just says he's going to be crunching it, his popcorn along with everybody else that's not in, in our country. And watch, uh, you know, watch the big event roll out. 
So he was the president of Russia from 2008 to 2012. He took over for Putin, and then Putin came back, and then he slides back. Texas is huge, you know. In reality, as this this shows, and 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 two things I want to note. I I don't. This is this looks to me like Arabic. Uh, I'm not sure who put the original out, but um, there is. You know, we could probably trace it. But I find it interesting too that they're doing this in 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 the Arabic because so many of the invaders are uh, from Islamic nations, and again the Third World War, according to uh, Albert Pike in 1871, is it partly it's it's Islam against Christianity to mutually self destruct and destroy each other. Why Texas is the most powerful state in America? Texas, which was once part of Mexico. Today, it's an economic powerhouse in the United States next to California. It has a GDP of $2.4 trillion, which is almost 9% of the country's GDP, surpassing major developed countries like Canada, South Korea, Russia, Australia, and even Mexico itself, which has a GDP of $1.8 trillion. To put this into perspective, if Texas were a country, it would rank as the eighth largest economy in the world. One key factor for Texas's economic might is it has the largest oil and gas fields that have ever been discovered anywhere in the world. Texas alone accounts for a staggering 43% of the United States' crude oil production and 25% of its natural gas production. Not just that, Texas alone produces 20% of the United States' electricity through wind power and solar energy. So Texas is not just a state. It's a powerhouse shaping America's future. So, yeah, it, it again, we do see that um, Texas to Florida is to be one unit that would include um, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and probably Georgia. Could also include Arkansas, um, Oklahoma as well. We'll see how this all shakes out and breaks out. Um, and again, please do share your thoughts and comments as well. Mm-hmm. I know we're really looking at a lot of change and, and people are, they really have a lot of focus on this right now, you know, as they should, but let's, let's not forget there's other things at play that we need to kind of keep our fo focus on also, because <laughs> usually when they do something like this, there's always somebody signing something over there in that dark corner. Um, we, we really have to watch for that, but I don't know, sending our positive intentions for anyone and everyone who is going to go to help, even though I'm concerned about it, to me, it does not feel good. It does not look right. There is something very sinister in the background going on here. And what, what I'm really seeing is a bit of a disruption when it comes to, um, the mail, you know, anything that we get via mail, uh, anything that's um, travel, anything like that. I really see quite a hiccup coming. I've seen it for a while. Wasn't exactly sure how it was going to pan out, but this is proving to be something that's going to create those things. So I would just encourage everyone to have backups to your backups and just be ready. So here you have uh, the U.S. is stationed nuclear weapons in U.K. to counter a threat from Russia, first time in 15 years. And below it, you see, again, um, there's a lot of people that are, are going to be just simply saying no, but yet world leaders keep saying yes. And, and the reality is we, we need to stop fighting each other. The one thing in the mix is the will of the Russian and Chinese people and the BRICS nations people. Because when we look to like the nations again that have been uh, suffering war, like Afghanistan, uh, and I was you know looking at uh, an old article where the U.S. was, <laughs> gosh, which president was it? I forget if it, I think it was Reagan. Uh, was it Reagan or was it the first Bush? Uh, had the Taliban there? over in the white house and they were greeting them and talking to them talking about them in the light like they are the founding fathers like our founding fathers right like it, it might be papa bush that said this and again this is before we started fighting afghanistan this is when russia was doing it so you know again it it, it it's all about control it's always about wiping out um vestiges that can give a clue to humanity as to just how great uh, the history has been 
re revised because it has been revised you know timelines even dates are, are probably not even close we could memorize so many key events 1066 battle of hastings etc cetera, etc cetera. but was it you know when we get down to it we don't know for sure because we weren't there yeah, uh, that's the thing. You, you, we don't know for sure because we weren't there. We can remote view things and try to look uh, into things. And I think that's something that still the majority of people don't understand. Uh, and they're going to go by history books or they're going to go by religious texts and think that they're infallible. <clears throat> when no, it's, it's all been distorted since day one, purposely. And here you got the Defense Secretary, Grant Shapps, urging Britons to join uh, the, the army after so many people now are not going to be able to um, function fully uh, physically because of certain reasons. Let's just say, you know, the entire population of, of the globe, uh, big, huge chunk uh, has found themselves with immune deficiency of one sort or another. You know, this is another propaganda video from the Ministry of, our, of Defense. And it was talking about how 2024 looks like chaos. But this is just the beginning. This, it's just, this is the words they use. This is just the beginning. In 2024, Britain stands at a turning point in our history. You're seeing the proof every day. The world has become acutely dangerous all around us. Our enemies are preparing. And we are just seeing the start of the tragic consequences. We are just seeing the start of the tragic consequences. Yes, you know, to be blunt, what they have planned is, is to do to all the major cities of the NATO countries what you see ha happening in Gaza. This is the reason for the level of tragedy in Gaza. Now, yeah, it is true. Our enemies are preparing, but the enemies <laughs> to humanity are the ones that are controlling the planet. It's, it's not the Russian people. It's not the Chinese people. It's not even the North Korean people or the Iranian people. In fact, if you look, you know, you have to look hard. If you go and search um, Iran in the 1970s or Algeria in the 1970s, 1960s, you're going to feel nostalgic for, for the way things were in the U.S. in the old days, too, because, you know, there wasn't even uh, that much radical Islam like there is now. People have been radicalized on purpose. This is all on purpose. The Marlin Luanda British flag chemical tanker struck by an anti-ship ballistic missile uh, fired by the Yemeni armed forces. And Indian warship is reportedly on the scene. This keeps escalating. It's, it's again, understanding the bigger picture. Oh, the UK successfully tested their Dragonfire weapon. Kind of reminds you of those things that we were calling dues. Yeah, now all of a sudden they're coming out and, oh, yeah, by the way, yeah, we're, we're ready to go. We got these things mounted. They've been mounted a long time. This is the war on humanity. It's a war on all of us. We got to stop fighting ourselves is the big thing. If we realize that, then we could really turn the corner and power off in Holland. Hmm, electricity shutdowns have started. You know, why do they do this? What is this? This is a fracking well. This is in Hall Summit, Louisiana. Why do they do this? Well, to keep, you know, not, to keep the cost down. Keep the cost down. But why do we even have this technology? Because we don't need this technology, and we, we don't really need solar either. This is the location of uh, earthquake right next to that uh, fracking well. And, you know, this this is... Just one of the reasons is when the big quakes come, it's they're going to be so much more damaging uh, than what they would be naturally and normally. Uh, Louisiana doesn't get typically a lot of quakes. This is a quake due to fracking. This is absolutely due to fracking. Oklahoma's plastered with them. Uh, you know, Texas looks like it's all landmines everywhere with all the fracking wells, as we were talking about. And it's not just here. I mean, we could go on up higher and, and find fracking all over in different areas. It's really, really horrible. We, we do have a swarm going on, by the way, by the uh, geysers here. 110 uh, quakes in the map right now. Um, 
again, I do think we're building towards the great quakes. Uh, I think that uh, they will be enhanced and, and induced to come, not in their own time, but sooner, because it is the perfect weapon of war. 6.1 in Guatemala, 108 kilometers deep, by the way. So, you know, and, and little ones up towards the New Madrid. Uh, yeah, there's a lot for us to get through in this year. But unfortunately, you know, most people can't uh, name maybe even uh, 10 or 20 uh, na national capitals. And most people don't have a clue about the different holocausts that have gone on around the globe. You know, India had its own holocaust under British colonialism. Absolutely. You know, again, uh, this is how they've spread out and wiped out. And, you know, so many different people, so many different ethnic groups, so many different ways of, of living, and so many different tidbits of knowledge that were passed on um, by indigenous groups that knew about the reality of inner earth, that knew about the reality of extraterrestrials, could even tell you which ones come from which star system. This is all out there. It's just the fact that, you know, what have they done? They, they've wiped it all out one step at a time. China had its own holocaust under Japanese occupation and then under Mao. Uh, you know, who eliminated more people than the Japanese did. And and the same thing under Stalin in Russia and Pol Pot in Cambodia. It just goes on and on and on. And, and when we talk about the founding of the U.S., indigenous people, 100 million plus, had their own holocaust in North and South America. Yes, you know, the USA was established uh, uh, because of the blood shed of the indigenous people that were here, and they were uprooted and kicked out into their little concentration camps that we call reservations. It never stops. You know, so again, when people are unaware and they feel patriotic, do you feel patriotic about uprooting people that were already here and putting them into reservations and, and basically exterminating them? You, you got to look deeper, but you know, unfortunately, everything about this civilization is about occupying your mind so much and your time so much just running on your little wheel to pay your taxes so they could do it to us again and again and again. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, what's what's so sad is a lot of people go out and they do what they do because of something someone said, you know, because of something the controllers claim and they, they don't even know the truth. They're just acting on certain information i mean they are doing what they think is right in their heart uh th the sad part about it is is they're doing what the control system wants and once again we have a huge situation on our hands a lot of people feel in their hearts they are doing the right thing but i smell a rat i smell something very wrong i think anyone who is going in to help i applaud them for helping but please be cautious please look around you please understand where the information is coming from why the information is coming the controllers are never going to do anything to our benefit ever ever the only thing they're ever going to do is take us one step closer to a more controlled situation so i think we all just need to be very cautious and very leery about what we're what we're cheering on and um, understand that the change starts with the self we each need to get um, you know we are frighteningly dependent on on food we are frighteningly dependent on the technologies that are out there now electricity internet um, <laughs> everybody needs to eat people need clean water and they're in control of all those things so looking around your house what are you really in control of what can you say that is yours? How they, they, it feels like they have just claimed everything to such a high degree. That's not to say we can't turn things around because we can. Unfortunately, a lot of, of this information to live off the land passed away with our elders. And we see exactly what they did to them. You know, they scared them into doing something. Um, and then that did them in. And now we're lacking a lot of information from a very important generation. So I, I think we need to reclaim that information ourselves, start creating journals, uh, write your own history, because they've put all the history out here for people to 
consume and understand. So we really need to go by what we know to be firsthand and our, our relatives and knowing and understanding what happened to father, what happened to grandfather, what happened to great grandfather and listening to their stories and their firsthand accounts because there are so many of them that are not pretty and they don't put that in the school textbooks for a very good reason. They don't want people to know the truth. So you see this definition of war. War is a place where young people who don't know each other and don't hate each other kill each other by the decision of old people who know each other and hate each other but don't kill each other. Well, even that's kind of an illusion because when you look to politics, you'll see later on uh, Michael and Barry hugging, uh, you know, the Bush family and stuff. I mean, you know, oh, they're lashing out right against left, left against right now. They're all on the same team. And as long as we choose their team, we're choosing the system. This is what they're doing right now. And so, you know, recognizing uh, that every every offering that they give us is still their offering. It's still the system. And one of the things that hits me here, as you can see, this is uh, German Luftwaffe. You see the cross. You know, this cross, like this, you will find on the statues of the uh, Sumerian, Akkadian uh, deities, the, the, those that we call the Anunnaki. And again, the Anunnaki is a very, very large group of beings of all different ethnicities and, and even some that are not even human. This is a very, very large group, yet what we have is a, a representation that's given to us by them of them. This is really, what's, what's the cross's designation? It, it's really the system. What's what's the the moon like the crescent moon of Islam? What is the moon really? Well, again, we've talked about how the moon was put in place by the system, by again those beings that we would call the Anunnaki, and there's even a uh, African tribe that talks of two warring brothers that decided to put the moon in place, and the moon was put in place at the Younger Dryas cataclysm event, and it's part of that cataclysm event. And that's why the Earth has a 23 and a half degree tilt at this point in time. And that's why we have all the weather that's crazy, because it would be more like an eternal spring if the Earth was upright and not tilted. So this is a representation of the system. The moon of Islam is a representation of the system. It's their dogma that's used to divide us. And yet we see, you know, no matter what, ethnicity what background there is a, a human love that's there and most people i think most people truly have good in their hearts and good in their intention and if you think otherwise by what you see then look to your surroundings where are you you know if you are again in the big cities where you're being blasted with all these energy waves that you can't see but are really real then, yeah, and people seem irritable and grumpy. A lot of it's the energy they're being blasted with. Again, we understand that those towers can transmit a lot of things. And the cell phones do, the smartphones do, uh, your tablets do. Again, when you look, and we were showing uh, kids over in uh, Yemen, again, how they were playing and having fun, even though they're living in abject poverty, there's... there's <laughs> None of them are holding cell phones. None of them are, are playing with tablets. No, they're playing with, with soccer balls. And, and they're out there in the sun. They're, they're getting natural downloads from the sun and into their DNA. They want you to lather sunscreen on so that you won't get the upgrades that are coming naturally from the sun. You see uh, in Christianity, people talk about the New Age deception. Well, you know, again, what age have we been in? We've been in the Kali Yuga, the age of darkness, the age that literally is, is hell on earth. You want to stay there? Are you afraid of a new age that's not hell on earth? Uh, I mean, it's even written. This, these are the birth signs of a new age. And you're terrified of the words new age? Well, yeah, again, they've, they've perverted and twisted everything. You know, they give you people on online that are, are talking about well, you, you can, you know, manifest anything that you want. You know, again, there's karmic repercussions for what we do. And, and the more we put love and compassion and in a higher position, the more we are really trying to benefit 
uh, the collective, the more we will be benefited naturally. And that's the type of stuff we talk about on Hearts Home. But we, again, put everything up on Patreon. You know, I really encourage people as we walk through this time to keep an eye on that silver lining. Keep an eye on anything and everything positive. No matter what you are going through, look to the positive. It's always there if you want to find it. I, I think the the one thing that the desert taught me the most is find the beauty you know because when i went there it was just a big pile of dirt to me it's like oh my gosh you know there's not even one tree on that mountain over there and i came from northern idaho but it taught me a very very valuable lesson that i hold on to to this day and that's no matter where you're at no matter what you're looking at no matter what's facing you no matter what you are facing there's beauty there if you want to find it you will find it. That's that's the lesson. Absolutely. Again, guys, thank you for being on this ride with us. We look forward to your comments. Source bless. Namaste. Namaste.